Hi, today we're going to be talking about tips for creating Hummingbird friendly content marketing. Now, Hummingbird was an algorithm update uh, created back end of, uh, of last year. Uh, and simply put, it enables Google to better understand concepts and complex search queries as opposed to just keywords. Now, what does this mean to us content marketers? Well, it means two things. First of all, it means the content that we create really needs to be focused and centered around the user. Okay, so it needs to be focused on user intent. So we'd be looking at a lot of things like search queries and that type of thing. And secondly, it means that we need to provide a lot more rich context for Google to better understand and rank that content. Now, there's two ways that we're going to do this and we're going to look at this today. We're going to look at a variety of different content types and then we're going to go on to formulate a bit of a content strategy. In both instances, they're both going to be looking at uh, Hummingbird and looking at this, con this, this thing about context and uh, user intent and user intentions. So let's kick off with content types. Well, first and foremost, evergreen content. This really is, does what it says on the tin. It's content that's uh, not created for, for quick gains and it doesn't have a, doesn't have a shelf life. This is content that um, has ongoing relevancy to its users over time and over time it generates its own authority. It's the type of content that um, really can be seen in things like user guides and white papers. It doesn't necessarily always have to be long form content. It could be like an advanced blog post if you like. Um, but really the crucial point with evergreen content is that it's something that's, a, that's an ongoing issue in your industry and your sector. Okay, it doesn't have to be company specific. It needs to be specific about your industry and your sector. And this way it gives Google that context about the content you've created. And this moves nicely onto educational content because educational content provides solutions to problems and it provides answers to queries and questions. So it's a natural extension really of that evergreen content. You want to be providing your users with, with answers to their queries and their questions. And a good way to do this is if you have a search bar on your website, look at the types of things that people are searching for. If you go into Google Analytics, you'll be able to see this. And that gives you a rich insight into the types of content that you can create. Now research is really things like questionnaires, surveys, anything where you test and analyze and you compile a report of, re you know, of, of research. Um, and it's, it's new information, it's new value to your users. The good thing about research is that, it, again, it provides Google with a rich source of, of context about that, about that content. Um, and also, in addition to that, Google, the back end of last year, launched a piece of code uh, called the in-depth article, article markup. Now, with the in-depth article markup, um, the idea is that you simply put this on your piece of content that you've done, and it could be like a white paper or a user guide. Um, and the idea is that it, it ranks um, for that, that content in the SERPs under its own section called in-depth articles. Now, at the moment, it's not exactly very clear um, as to how Google do this. Um, at the moment, they kind of favor uh, big publishers and big brands, but it stands to reason that if you've gone to the extent of producing a, a thorough piece of research and a thorough piece of in-depth content, um, you want to add this code to it because it just might be able to rank uh, in, those, in those sections. FAQs. Now, FAQs are notoriously hard to rank um, the page themselves. Um, and also, in addition to that, uh, FAQs, generally speaking, revolve a lot around company issues and company questions. Now, a good idea to make it more hummingbird friendly would be to look at your FAQs and start to look at ways in which you can address industry-specific or um, sector-specific uh, queries and questions. Um, this way, it will enable Google to, to look and provide a lot more context around the, in the industry and the sector that you're within, um, and not necessarily just the company issues. Another good tip with FAQs would be to, instead of hosting it all on one page, because at the moment a lot of FAQs are just on one page, um, they either have like a little drop down bar to, to reveal the answer. Another good, good way of doing this would be to actually link um, each answer to a separate page and a separate piece of content, and it could be a separate blog post or a separate article. And this way what you're doing is you're actually uh, allowing that piece of content to rank in its own right. And that's a really handy tip, um, like I say, to, to make that content rank in its own right, um, but also to kind of um, give your FAQs uh, a bit more credence um, and, and links as well, links to those pieces of content. 
And finally, case studies. Um, very similar to FAQs, really. Case studies sometimes can be perceived as being quite company specific, but in this instance, and in, in terms of creating hummingbird friendly content, they are worth their weight in gold. Simply because with every single case study, what you're doing is you're providing an industry specific problem, an industry specific solution, and then you're showcasing how you, your company, what results you've achieved. So not only is it addressing the issue of providing more context for Google, because you're showcasing the industry specific problem and solution, but you're actually adding a bit of user intent there and a bit of user value because you're showcasing how you, your company, what results you've achieved. And that helps that drive that user behavior. Now this moves nicely onto content strategy because as we've mentioned, Google really with Hummingbird, it's all about understanding, better understanding context. And it does this by linking pieces of content together or searching for those links between content. Now, what this means to us as, as content marketers and online marketers is that this gives us a good opportunity to start to plan um, pieces of content that link together, okay? And we can start to strategize this and we can start to plan this in our, in our content marketing plans. Now, thankfully for us, the buying cycle naturally has its own buying process and it naturally has its own sections to which we can start to link. And if we look at these in a bit more detail, you'll be able to understand and, and see why. So we have four distinct phases. We have inquiring at the top of the funnel, we have browsing in the middle of the funnel, buying at the bottom of the funnel, and then we have that aftercare. Now, if we take buying a car, for example, you can start to see how each section brings its own distinct um, pieces of content and own distinct uh, ways in which we can create content. So at the inquiring phase of buying a car, but this phase, you could really be looking at creating content around um, what are the benefits of buying a car? What are the benefits of, of, of buying first hand over second hand? Um, what are the different types of, of, of cars, models that are ideal for first time buyers? At the browsing phase, this is where uh, your customers and your users, their needs are going to be a bit more specific. At this phase, they're going to be looking at um, very, very, uh, a variety of prices. Uh, they'll be looking at things like um, fuel efficiency, um, economy, um, and so on and so forth. Then, as we get down to the buying phase, this is when they need to get very, very specific. And what you can do here is you can showcase user reviews. Okay, so they might have identified a particular car that they want, and they need to know a bit more information about that. User reviews are perfect there. They might want to know their buying options, their buy, you know, how much the car's worth, and, and so on and so forth. And then aftercare is really, um, it's common to kind of think, well, aftercare, this is something that a company might offer. You know, wh what is it about your company that's specific uh, for the aftercare phase? Well. Exactly what we've mentioned before, instead of being company specific, we want to be industry specific. So at this phase, instead of kind of talking about what your company can offer, create content that's around about what people can do in general um, once they've bought a car, general maintenance, what they can do for their car to pass its MOT, how to change a tire, so on and so forth. And you can start to see at each phase there have distinct differences in the types of content that you create. Now the key for us is to then start to link that together. And what we want to do is we want to start linking the content coherently, okay, so that there are no loose ends or dead ends for either the user or for Google. And once we do that, we can start to appreciate how Hummingbird works. So just to recap, in terms of content types, you want to be at the forefront of your mind, you need to have the user. Okay, all of your content needs to be focused around user intent and you need to be creating content that focuses on um, providing a rich source of context for Google. And then in terms of a strategy, we need to start thinking about how each phase of the process and the buying process links together, okay? Because like we say, we don't want any loose ends or dead ends for Google or the user. Now that leaves me just to say thank you very much for watching.